What if I just leave meeting? I'm like, I don't want to be. <laughs> I'm not interested. <laughs> How are you? I'm really good. I don't think I have one bad thing to say, but, um, you know, to preface this, like I text, I mean, I texted you a week ago being like, I need to talk. Yeah. So I know I'm good, but I, you know, part of, I think what, you know, brought me to here is that I know that we often, you and I will have these long deep dive conversations. And I think these are the ones that, um, we handle kind of off book and then we do podcasts like after things are shiny. And I was like, I don't know. First, I just had hit me. I'm like, we should just record the conversation because I feel like if I'm like, I'm good. Like I have, I literally don't have any complaints, but I think if I'm, if I'm going through this kind of weird process or weird, weird, not weird, but confusing headspace where I'm calling my friend Matt to talk to that other people are going to benefit from your wisdom and my thoughts and I don't know. I, I agree completely. I, look, yeah. I, I think we are in a very, very strange, tumultuous time where mm. no one's a hundred percent sure. And and it's weird, right? Because the the lifestyle that we've chose to live, where where we are gonna build our own worlds and have our own income, figure that out, not work for someone else. Man, the rules and targets are a constantly moving thing. Yeah, of, of how this works and like what. I, I'm just leaning into the fact that like what hustle gets the job done. Yeah. That's all it is. I kind of feel like Rick Moranis though, who like crushed it and did all these great movies and then said, I'm done. <laughs> and I kind of feel like the people that have more to say and sometimes the most important stuff to say, um, which I'm going to put myself in that category. I'm like, I just don't want to feel like talking anymore. I feel like there is just, I feel like I'm sitting in a dinner table that everyone's talking so loud at that I'm like, if I could, I just wanted to, I might want to, and you're like, I'm not going to yell over everybody. And I'm just going to kind of eat my turkey. That's kind of how I feel right now. And candidly, it's a really shitty attitude, um, but it's also an instinct I'm feeling. And I feel like some of what I feel like doing, I'm not sure if the world is ready for yet. And it's, 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 because I agree with the hustle. I've been doing that, but all these things I'm, I've been working on, I'm like, I don't know. I don't need that much money. Matt, we've talked about this. Like, mm-hmm. I don't need that much money. I don't have a lot of things. I want the ability to travel and take care of people I love and probably buy some nice wine along the way. And that's really, <laughs> that's a kind of it. And so when, when you take, when I take the money pressure off, the hustle um, feels less important and the quality of the things that I'm doing feel just integral to like me feeling like myself. And I think that's where I'm feeling really muddled and why I wanted to talk to you. Cause I, I just, I'm not quite sure what I'm supposed to be doing here. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's, I think, that's <laughs> I think, I don't think you're alone in that, that <laughs> feeling right at all. Um, you know, and with, with your journey, dude, I, I do think it's been fascinating, right? Because I think you have, you've put in such a tremendous work to to the hustle, to whether, I mean, look, I'll, I'll, I'll toot your horn, dude, but like Biggest Loser, uh, American Gladiators, uh, writing books and being part of shows and being a guest on stuff and all of these type of things, doing the celebrity fitness trainer thing that you did, fuck. Like, you know, <laughs> it's... I am aware of how much effort it takes to juggle all those plates. And I just want to say fucking good work Mm, because you, you. you're not a monster on the backside (laughs) and you also don't hate everyone, which I think (laughs) equally as easy. Um, and especially with those hustles, dude, like you've you've had a couple things and, and that, that are kind of supposed to be those like, fuck yeah, we got it. And then you've also come to the realization of like, yo, there's no there. Mm -hmm. And if I'm going to stress over this, no there, well then let's just accept there's no there and do whatever the fuck we want. Yes. Yes. But I feel like whatever the fuck I want is like being John Mayer and being what I would say is our generation's most talented guitar player. And, and a not pussy? Having, <laughs> I'm uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> definitely not. Um, but, but like to, to, 
and to not have a guitar to play. That's what I feel like. I'm like, okay, I don't have to do that. I am going to do these other things. And I spent a lot of, a lot of my time. And I'm not saying this as like a martyr, like I committed so much to the, this show and that show I made choices. No, you committed that to you. Yeah. uh, But most of it's to reflect what I thought other people thought was really cool. Like I didn't need to do biggest loser. I'm like, but this is going to show people that I'm a really good trainer. Right. So if I get this show, it means I'm better than everybody else like that. In my, in my brain, like I immediately put hierarchy in place. And the more I did the show and the more I met other kind of peers, I'm like, Oh my God, you know, the the show or no show, I'm an incredible trainer. And so are these other people, right? Like Gunnar Peterson, you know, hands down best trainer ever, just because he never did biggest loser. Doesn't mean I'm better than him. No, like we learn from each other all the time, but here I am. I spent all this time really kind of what I look at now as a, someone that mentors people through this, it's like, I was kind of avoiding what it was that I really wanted to build. What really is inside me that wants to come out that hasn't been done, hasn't been seen. I can't follow, you know, your homework, Matt. I can't look at what Gunner did and say, give me the answers. That's the scariest road. And so now I'm finally there. And then we're in this place. So I'm like, okay, great. I've got the courage to go here. And I am in the middle of building things that I don't see anywhere and it's exciting. But then again, I feel like John Mayer without a guitar. I'm like, well, how am I supposed to get through to people? So I have this, I finally have the courage. I'm, I'm my more me at 39 than I've ever been in my life, which is always the hope. Like every day is my best day and my most aware day and my fill in the blank day, whatever that feels like to each person. And yet like, you know, we're, we're, I'm out of, I'm out of, the vehicle, I, you know, and, and, I, and, and I, you know, my dark moments, I'm like, what the fuck? Why can't television just be cool again? I was really good at it. <laughs> I was really good at this thing. No shit. No, dude. I was pretty great at that. Gosh, darn it. And so I was like, okay. I'm like, but that's not there. So what? And then I looked at social media and I, I have like, I'm having like this ethical, uh, conversation. I'm like, I feel terrible on there. I know. I don't want to tell people, Hey, follow me, spend more time on something that I actually think they should spend less time on. Mm-hmm. And, and then, and even if I spend time there, I can't get through to my people. And so you start thinking, what am I, what am I doing here? Yeah. And, and that is, that is literally the conversation I had to have with you. Cause I'm like, I kind of feel a little nutty and, and I'm, I have my, I'm healthy. I, my, like I've, I have so many things to be grateful for, but as far as this purpose on this planet, I'm looking for a guitar that maybe I need to build, but I don't know what the fuck I'm supposed to do in this weird in between. And I feel like you are the only person I know that somehow finds the, the yourself in the day and says, well, today we're going to take this post-it note and make it look cooler than it does. I, I don't know. Like you just find the thing. And I just don't know if it's a mindset or if it's a patience or if this is like the growth, like, you know what I mean? It's, it's darkest before the dawn. And I'm like, my eyes are going to start bleeding that. No, dude. Look, dude, so um, I, uh, so a, a couple of things there I'd like to. to <laughs> Which um, one would you like um, to unpack now? So you, by the so way, you're talking, <laughs> so you're talking about Biggest Loser, right? And, and talking about that experience and you're talking about how that was really done as a hope for the perception that how the outside would see you. Yeah. And I I think that perception is, is the mess up, right? Whereas like, I, I know that I look at those type of things and opportunities, not as an ability to prove to others that I need to be validated by. Yeah. Some horseshit TV show who doesn't know dick about training, fucking inviting me on to be an expert. Yeah. Let's not pretend they do. Yeah. Or, nor do we pretend that any this is anything other than entertainment and a fucking game show. Someone wins. Yes. The fucking game show. Although the only thing I'll fight back on is the the stories and the people are real. Hundred percent. But that's yeah. But other than that, the but it's still a competition. Is different than them making fucking knives. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um. Nor nor are we pretending that that route to losing weight is the healthiest sustainable route, Mm. which yeah, totally indifferent either way, but no, 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 it was hard because they only, they only rewarded weight loss. And if, and if we had changed the formula to, if you, if Matt lost two pounds, but gained eight pounds of muscle, that was a 10 pound week. 
right? Like that. Like, it, not what people give a shit about. Because people no. want magic and they want extremism and they want all of the other things on the other side of it. So yeah. for me, whenever those opportunities take place, right? Like um, any of those big, big things like that. For me, they're never a validation of my own thing. They're more of like, yo, I think I have an opportunity to make this better for everyone involved. Yeah. Yeah. And, and to <clears> me, <throat> that's the challenge. Like, yo, someone else has a chance to give me the wheel. I, I'll give it hell. And, yeah. and doing better at it does help me find more people that may be interested in my thing. And one of the yeah. sh- social media wise that, that I've taken and really looked at over the last, even just couple months, um, just for as fast as things are changing in the, in the last couple of years with COVID and TV and everything's different, which here we are. Yeah. You know, Sitting and crying about it doesn't do me any good. It's changing. No. Um, yep. So now what I'm looking at, right, like is realistically of, of the people that follow hate brand, the people that follow me, mm-hmm. uh, the people that follow my YouTube channel, how am I best serving the people that have already raised their fucking hand that are interested in the things I have going on? Mm-hmm. The people that don't, yeah, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I'm interested in me and mine. Yeah. Like if this is if this is a message that resonates with you, yo, I'm here to help and I will and I will lean in and give as much access to that as I can share to just share perspective and what is my personal experience, especially with the advantage that people like you and I have is our resources that come from doing this other grind. It's from getting to know each other. It's from getting to know Gunner. It's from getting to know all these other people, right? Yeah. And that thing I've been talking about is now that I've started kind of doing some one-on-one and some mentorship group stuff, uh, things like that, like I realized no one has resources. No. All of their friends and family and people that are around are just like them that experience very similar lives who grew up in a very similar town and have the same mindset of, yo, the safe approach. Like what's next? You have to do this. There is a big part of what it's, you know, uh, falling into what is expected of you and never, ever under, never under, never under, you can do it that, that you're at the wheel. Yeah. And that you don't have to make those decisions. And, but my problem, the problem that I'm saying is Jen is they don't have exposure to us. Yeah, they don't have Matt Vincent's cell phone to say, hey, buddy, I need to talk. Right. Yeah. Where I have a you and, yeah. I, and I have Gunner and I have Bert Soren and I have Aubrey Marcus. Like I have a yeah. fucking incredible Rolodex. No shit. I can figure my stuff out. Yeah. Well, it's funny that you said that because that's why, you know, even you, you were interesting. You're like, I'm going to take the wheel and do what I can. Like I did do that with Biggest Loser. I did it differently than than any of the other trainers. And and yet my motives were still not dialed. And I think that because what I thought was the way, and by the way, it's weird when you were talking, I was like, it was over seven years ago. Seven years, right. Seven years. I mean, me at 31 versus, uh, oh my God. Like I feel like Mother Teresa. Like I feel like I am enlightened compared to what I said. Can, yeah, you imagine, right. can you imagine at 39 if you're like, fuck, I think I had it better figured out at 30. <laughs> like, yeah, I'd rather yeah. jump in a fucking river. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Uh, so, and so that's why I think what I realized the formula was, was like, you have to make it all about you while you're the best trainer, while you are the top, while you have the most answers. And I remember, you know, Chris Powell, he was, he was another incredibly great trainer. Um, and he does, you know, extreme weight loss. That's what he did on that show. And he always is like, Jen, only tell them what you know. And he said that to me a few years ago, and that really resonated with me. And it's still, you know, here I am during the pandemic and everyone's kind of fighting for spotlight because even you talk, I, I appreciate what you're saying. People that raise their hand that they want to be here for this. I still can't get in touch with my people on my social media. No, I have over 300. Th- so it's like, it's a little confusing and difficult to be like, well, their hands are raised, but how can I get in touch with them? And so I've started building an entirely different platform away from social that I, I haven't even told you about, but it, it's just because it. I do want to be in the driver's seat of that allows them to get in their own. Yes. You know, like I'm building a platform that has 
nothing to do with me. Like all social media is like, look what I'm wearing. Look what I'm eating. Look at my workout. And it and it's aspirational and you get pick up tips and tricks from people. I mean, I see what Bonnie posts. It's like, I get ideas. You know, I like her mindset. Like there are things that you gain from social media, but it's like, it can't just be all about me. And I, I'm, I'm trying to bring other voices together, different writers, different people, even like friends like that are sharing as guest bloggers within this platform to share those conversations. So there's, there is resource, there is, there is, um, that feeling of not being on your own. Like you're sharing the story, you're sharing the thought process, you're sharing a piece of your own reconciliation, which is, I think what we're all on and what we're all in and still like, and, and I know like Matt, there's a part, there's my heart like thumps. I'm like, this is what I'm supposed to build. And I don't know if anyone's going to look at it. Yo, I but, don't. <laughs> but, but oh, well, like, like uh, I mean, at some, you know, at some point you have to feel that way. Right. Oh man. Because, that's so hard for me. So, Ooh. so, so for me, I've recently, uh, the mentorship group I started like, Oh, it took, yeah. a, it took a lot, right? Like there's a lot of imposter syndrome to come over. There's a lot of those type of things. Like, who the fuck am I to talk to people? Any, mm. any of those. Right. But at the end of the day, I mean, you know, if I can help, I'd like to help. Yep. Yep, and if yep, this is the yep. way to do that. And look, it's really, really easy, I think, to get caught up when we've played such a weird numbers chase game for a long time, where, where this fucking made up fa fantasy number has some type of deal with your, with your worth. Yeah. And it doesn't, right? And so, like, one of the things that I've, I've told people, like, like, I've run Hate Brand for the last seven years, and it's been... The oh, my God, seven for you, oh. too. How funny. And it's been the majority of my income for, for a big chunk, chunk of that time, right? And it's easy to look at, you know, we have you know, 60,000 or so followers on Hate Brand, which isn't a ton in the scheme of social media numbers. Same thing for, for my own personal, right? And even if I look at that, Jen, as... 80 plus 60, let, let's just call it a hundred unique mm -hmm. for hate brand to really kick ass. I need 3000 orders a month. Hmm. 3%. Yep. I need 3% to give a shit. Mm -hmm. so that's who I'm talking to. <clears throat> I don't need a ton of people on board. I don't need, I don't, the other 97% is great and I'll keep doing my thing and I'll stay true to whatever I believe that message is, but I don't need 50% of them to buy in and especially not 50. And, and, and my concern back to kind of where we're talking about, like where the drive and passion and those type of things is for me, I've had to maybe widen the definition of what it is that I'm passionate about. And for me is I want to create. Mm. I want to create apparel. I want to create content. I want to build like building out this gym was really, really fun. Designing how like designing our interior of our house was great. Yeah. Our podcast is great. Whatever it fucking takes for me to stay in a life where I can create for a living. That's what I want to do. And I don't give a shit if that turns into I'm creating Airbnb experiences and being able to rent those properties out. Like, I don't care what it is I get to create, but that's what I want to do the rest of my life. So as you were talking, I wrote down, I want to, and I put serve and connect. I was like, that's what I want to do. I okay. know it. I don't have any doubt. Like I wasn't even thinking, I'm like, just write whatever the words come out. And I, I think the, the struggle that I'm having is what I'm passionate about doing. Um, this is a bit of an inception, follow my brain. So it's reliant on the receiver. Right. I, I could make the best Thanksgiving dinner on the planet if you and Bonnie don't come. <laughs> no one's eating the food. So it is reliant on your reception of, of me, um, which I guess could play into a multitude of uh, human condition, self doubt, insecurity sure. levels, which we won't go right now. But the other side of it is what I do for a living, right? I help people. Uh, see themselves. I help them face their greatness. I create an allyship in me to them, but also with them to themselves. That is who I am. But the promise I make them, they have to do all the work for. 
We are the only industry that says, this is the promise. Now, here are the things, here are the steps that you must complete in order to fulfill my promise to you. And so in a way, I I think that's where I feel where this, this simmer of, of um, this anxious feeling is coming from, because I don't know if anyone's coming to dinner and I, and I, and I don't know if they're willing to do the work. And well, you never will until you send the invites out. Mm. That's a fucking problem, dude. Look, I did it. Yeah, dude. dude, we, I, we threw a Halloween party here at, at dope. Right. And yeah. Dude, I'm super fucking honest with you, man. The, the imposter syndrome that came from doing that because <laughs> we're, we're, it's a comparison piece, right? Like I look yeah. at friends and I look at other businesses and I look at this and I'm constantly wondering like, yeah, what the fuck am I building? Because <laughs> never at the same level as, as the people that I, that I'm friends with. Yeah. But I'm aware the comparison of the thief of joy. I yeah. know it. And I know that that's true. Right. And what a bullshit thing it is. And I know my other friends that operate at different levels have the exact same feeling about their thing. Yeah. No different than someone who comes to my thing who's just trying to get their garage gym together. What a yeah. fantasy land I feel. Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, I'm insecure about it because the exterior of the building isn't as pretty as I wish it was or something yeah. like that. Right? Like, what a fucking stupid thing. But at the end of the day, like, yo, you did build it. And I mean, look at, I, I, I mean, other stuff like you're talking about, right? Like, the, the biggest thing that I've got to experience recently with that is is fit for service with uh mm. with Aubrey Marcus and that group and his, oh, God. his and like man that was a big weekend get together 150 people come in and there's breathwork classes and they talk yeah. about that type of stuff and they are hitting these bigger notes of dealing with your own bullshit and being accountable and those type of things and man what i see is i see people raising their hand for more interaction for more community for more yeah. part of an actual thing not the blanket approach that is the only foreplay model that social media tries to be. Yeah. It's, it's a funny thing then. I think um, this is going to sound like poor me, but I'm just going to lean into it. That's fine. So what I, what I'm best at is exactly what people are raising their hand for. I am the best at connection at sitting with you in a room whether it's me and 300 to 3000 or just three people like you and I have done in Denver with our friends. Like, I, I, I am at home there and yet it's now we are shifting into a world where like, I mean, I'm going to cry. Like, I can't remember the last time I saw you. I know. It would have been summer. You no, know, it would have been summer. And it makes me sad. And yet also, um, thank God for t- technology. Cause it's the reason I'm able to see you and talk to you right now. And other people are going to be able to listen to this recording and benefit from it. So I feel like I'm caught in, in like two worlds and it just doesn't feel good. It's like, I know how to do this, but I don't know how to translate it. I don't like, I'm, I, I, it's so funny. I've been, I've been texting with this amazing girl from Slovakia. Her <laughs> name's Sarah. You just find her on WhatsApp, like some random <laughs> I, it was through, I was, so I'm looking at Pinterest because Pinterest is becoming like a, a, a search engine for people that are looking for information and from mm-hmm. creators. And so it's a very different way to interact. And, um, it makes me really uh, hopeful that there, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like, okay, Jen, you're, you're done crying about it. Now try to do something about it. And she wrote me this, she wrote me this email uh, and she, and she literally, <laughs> the first sentence I'm opening it up, hold on, she's like, uh, turning Jen's heart into a digital voice. <laughs> and, and it made me laugh because I was like, you know, cause there was a bit of a language barrier, but she was great. And I was just like, yeah, yeah, that's what I want. That's exactly what I wanted to, because I, I know I feel it in my bones that it's necessary. And I've had every time I want to quit, Matt, like every time I want to quit, get up or quit what I'm building with Foriana and, and, and I'll, I'll get an email of someone that's like, Hey, you know, I've been in your private group and I've been in Foriana for a year and, you know, it's changed my life. And it's like, it's a, it's a, it's a three swiper pager thing. And I'm like, you have to keep going, Jen. You have to keep going. But it's but just not, not even like, yo, you, you, you don't owe it to them. Like, I just want to be clear on that. You don't fucking owe that to these people. 
No, but it's like what I know I must do, but I don't know. I just, I'm like, I just, again, John Mayer, no guitar. That's what I feel like. And I finally, I had another conversation with my friend Rhonda and she was just like, just follow you and see, so you could just go. Just, she's like, you have to build your own guitar. <laughs> it's like, cause I so, told her the so analogy. So with that, that, that's, that's something I totally believe is true. Right. Okay. And I know like you've talked about podcasting over the years. A, I don't know why you never have. I started it last week. God damn it. it just went black. But you've been in my ear. I, you and Brett, Brett Bartholomew have been like, where the fuck is your podcast? So I, I finally started it. It's called small things in common. Um, thank you for helping. Um, build my courage on that we literally just launched it good um and you know it's it's literally just you know the smallest thing you like you and i were introduced because we like lifting weights when we were former throwers that was the smallest (laughs) thing we had in common i was like hey meathead meathead say hello and then we found such a rich relationship in in uh our own evolutions that we've shared over time and so being throwers were the smallest thing we had in common and i feel like uh, that's, that's the, that's the ground I'm breaking in these conversations. It's just showing, you know, showing that commonality. So I thank you. Killer. I think that's fucking killer, dude. And, uh, and again, like, I can also understand a bunch of the feeling of like, fuck, why did I wait three years? Why did I wait time? <laughs> but, yo, stop. Quit looking in the rear view mirror to make decisions going forward and let's go forward. Yeah. Best time to fucking plant a tree, dude. It's 20 years ago, but we missed it. <laughs> Let's fucking plan it right now. So we missed that. Yeah. <laughs> the next best day is right fucking now. <laughs> like, <laughs> I can't believe you're so funny. It's crazy that you're saying that because that that message came up. I was with Neil, our our amazing Japanese Yoda uh, knife maker. I was there in September with him, and for anyone listening, it's Neil Kamamura. You should look him up. I think his Instagram is RPM Neil, and we were up, and you know. It, it was the hardest knife I've ever made with him because I asked him to apprentice me like you, like a year and a half before the pandemic. So I would start to meet with him every couple months and I was getting better and better. And this was like a harder knife. And I just like, I, I mean, I hated, I was like, I just want to quit. Like you just learn so much about yourself when you work with your hands and when you are sitting there trying to move that metal and he's like, what are you doing? So he had like a talking to me, like one morning we got there. I'm like, Hey, let's go, let's go. I know I want to use today. He's like, sit down. <laughs> and Neil just sat there and he, I'll paraphrase it. Cause I can never say it as well as he does, but he talked about how he's like, my favorite body of water is a stream. And he said, it's always going one direction forward. It doesn't go backward. It doesn't look backwards. It goes forward always. And if there's a rock in its way, it just glides around. It doesn't make it a big deal. He's like, you need to be the stream just keep going and it's funny because literally by definition my last name in swedish to resist the stream it Mm. is just painfully ironic and i'm like okay so whether it was like the universe said let's make it really clear to her what she needs to do which is not resist life taking you forward and but neil said it you're saying it's like you just have to keep going and it's not blind faith but nope. it is a sense of, I, I don't know, there's something in you. He has it. It's like a, I'm just going to keep going. I don't know. And you've always had that mindset. And I don't know if you learned it or earned it or what. I, I don't know another way. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I, I, I don't know another way, dude. Like it, it really is something I've talked about, but I've really just applied everything that worked for me from strength training to everything else, like simplify it down to its easiest core, which again is like, you know, if you want to be stronger, I don't give a shit about any program you're on. It's bench squat, deadlift and overhead press, moderately heavy. Don't get hurt for a decade. Yeah. 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 Right. (laughs) How, how do I apply that simple rule to anything else I want to chase? And so pretending I can be good at or fully grasp anything in, in a shorter amount of time isn't fair. And so just be part of that process, right? Like, man, I've mm-hmm. had some real fucking heavy weeks the last couple, yeah. just work-wise. It's, uh, it's been a fucking fight, Black Friday stuff and just yeah. um, a, lot of, mm-hmm. a lot of plates juggling. I'm, I'm juggling yeah. more than I ever have trying to figure this thing out. And that's, that's the challenge, right? Yeah. So when I have something come up like, 
like fucking 1200 hoodies that are cut wrong. No. Right. And so it's something like that, that like, I don't know that I have an answer for right now. Like, I don't know if I have to eat it. I don't know. Do I have like, there's a lot, but where I remind myself instead of woe is me on it and like, fuck, this is blah, blah, blah. It is everyone I know who's kicking ass doing what I'm doing has figured out this problem. This was always a roadblock on the path to where I wanted to go. So be stoked we found it. Yeah. God, maybe you're right. I mean, of course you're right. You're seldom not right. Well, but, was, uh, something back to the stream. And I, <laughs> I, love, I love what Neil's saying, right? That yes, it does. goes downstream. It's always going forward. It does glide around boulders and makes its way smoothly through as frictionlessly always. as possible, right? Yeah, always. Always forward. And occasionally it brings a flash flood and changes the fucking course of the river. Yeah. You get to do as well. Did you ever hear about that bridge that was built? This is really, I'm Golden not going to be able to remember. <laughs> You're like, I'll shout Famous. out any bridge. <laughs> Golden Gate. No. <laughs> um, Bright I'm red. Gonna, I'm going to, I'm going to fuck it up. This was sent to me two years ago. Um, there, I believe it was it built in Central America. Um, there was this pr- pretty large river that, uh, because of it, they were having issues getting goods across and anything like that. So, I forgot who the architect was, but they built this this you know indomitable bridge. It cannot be moved by because very vicious weather, storm, hurricane, you know, it's in the it's in Central America. So it's tough, sure. tough, uh, tough stuff happening down there nature wise. And they said, it's not going to move. This bridge is unbreakable. It will always be there. So after every storm, it'll stand there. And what do you know? <laughs> there was such a storm came through that it moved the path of the river. And now you got this bridge that you can't move. And I'm, I find my personality type to be one that like, I am going to build the immovable, indestructible bridge. And now the course of my river just changed and I'm pissed about it. And I'm, and I'm, I'm like, okay, it's fine. Lesson learned. Like that's the beauty. I, and I'm, I've said this before, but it's never failure. It's always feedback and it's really good feedback for me. Like, you know, but it's, I, that's what I feel like perhaps my anger is or my sadness is or my confusion is I'm like, I just built the best bridge ever. And now we can't even use it. (laughs) So now what, what are you considering your bridge? Um, well, I think, I I think if I, I think the bridge is television and social media. Got I it. think that's the bridge. So, so would the bridge be the following? Would it be using those resources to reach people? Like, like I guess yeah. the more traditional approach. Yeah. Like I, I'll, I'll run into people in airports all the time, especially when I hit my flyover States and, and um, as, as we've opened up again and people will recognize me from oh, the Midwest. I love it, man. Hey, that's us. You're there. I know it, dude. I live in the middle um, of by the way, I'm going to be in Kansas soon. We might have to work out a, a little dude, hang. Please. Yeah, I have a con. Okay, I'll, 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 I just I just remembered you're in Missouri. Um, and I don't know. I just, I feel like it's like, okay, none of that works. And by the way, thank, thank God, because we're supposed to evolve. I, I'm just, I'm just having a, I don't know where it's supposed to go. And I, and I think I, I have an instinct of where, which is why I'm building Foriana, which is the other platform I've been kind of hinting at, but it's like, oh my God, I'm, and I'm putting so many resources, money, bringing in other voices and talent and design. And like, I'm building this whole new ecosystem that I believe is the next step forward. And I I think maybe I'm just, it's, it's not that I have doubt that it's the right thing, but I'm just, I think I'm just scared or something. Well, you should be. That yeah. means it matters, dude. Yeah. No, that, mean, that, that means it fucking matters. It registers. 
but it's but what you said really helped me. I, I forget that this is the long game. You said about being a good thrower, right? Like lift these lifts moderately for 10 years and don't get hurt. Okay. I rem- I'll never forget. I might have told you the story, so forgive me if it's a repeat. But when I did Biggest Loser, I did it one full season and I was going into the airing of my second season. And I remember it was the daytime of New Year's Eve. So I was at the Ralph's and I was getting extra booze and stuff, whatever party I was going to. And I was sitting there in line and looking at all the magazine color it covers for the January issues. Oh. And I was pissed because I wasn't on any of them. And I was like, wow, fascinating. Oh, I was like, I've, uh, this is, this is a thing I've never had to deal with. So I'm very, very uh, yeah. fascinated. And I was just like, I'm, and this it's, it's tricky where I was like, Oh, I'm, I'm just happy to have the opportunity. I want to do my part on the show to ego. And I was like, I'm on the show now. Why the fuck is Jillian on a cover? She's not, she's not been on the show. And I remember I had this, this anger toward the industry, toward her a woman I'd never met. Like, come on, like grow up Jenny. And I remember I get to the car and I had to shape it for me. I was like, I'm like, I've been doing, this is my second whole season. I should, I deserve that. Right. So then I started looking up, uh, I looked up, you know, how old was Jillian how Michaels in her first Michaels season been on fucking TV? <laughs> um, over a decade. I was like, Oh, she kind of deserves this. Not me. She's done it for 10 years. And regardless of what you think of her or her methods or her personality, she's been in it for 10 years. And no, I'll tell you, that she tells me that path. Hello. And then I started, so then I got real crazy. I'm like, who else do I like? I'm like, Sandra Bullock. Okay. What I'm thinking in my mind, what was a pivotal moment for Sandra Bullock in film? I'm like, speed. She was 29 or 30, right? Jillian was 30. Uh, I looked at The Rock. I think he was around 30 or 31 when he did the rundown. I was like, you're 31. You're you owe 10 years before you get to even start to. And I, I was gonna say before you get to behave like this is kind of what I told myself in sure. my car that day. And 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 yet I don't think at any point anyone gets to, deserves to act that way, you know. But um, but I I was very um it was a it was an eye-opening moment. And so now no, I'm a at you catch on yourself though. Yeah, oh, big snitch. I was I was Oh, I was fuming. I'm like extra bottle of vodka tonight. You know, I was so dead. But now I look, I'm like, oh, I'm, st-. and when you said that, I go, oh, Jen, you're still not at 10 years yet. Well, I mean, Keep but going. Now, you're also talking about that comparison is a thief of joy, right? Like, look how many oh. fucking great things you had going for you and have going for you that some bullshit magazine cover. And again, I don't mean bullshit magazine cover. No, no, no. But yo, really? Come on. I've been I've been on the cover of like two things ever, and both were really fucking cool experiences. It's so cool. It's so and, fun. and neither one are things anyone reads. <laughs> which no, is, but it's like a party trick. You're like, did you see? Here yeah, I right, am. Dude. No, and, and <sighs> look, I, I bet there's a ton to it, Jen. I bet there's a ton to it, especially with you really cutting your teeth in this entertainment world that's on TV and all this. And man, that is age appropriate and fucking time is not on your side in that fucking mm-hmm. realm. But time is on your side with expertise. Yeah. And that's what yeah, yeah. fucking go away, right? Like I'm hearing you talk about y- you built this thing with Biggest Loser, this TV, this the things like that, right? My bridge. Yep. Your bridge. Yo, I can't ever throw. Yeah. It's the only reason I'm in the fucking room Mm -hmm. was that I did this other thing. But now that I haven't thrown in five years, almost six. Yeah. No one cares. So can I ask you a question? How do you feel like you started to help make your, make that evolution for yourself? You just, you just had to. (laughs) Yeah, but like I have to, and I just don't know where to start. Like most days, I don't have anything to say. I'm I'm kind of like worn out. Like most of my best, my best mentorship comes from working with people. I don't I don't really like I, I post some of my workouts sometimes. I'm pretty private. I don't like talking about myself. So and, so, so so don't so, so don't talk about. I mean, look, the big, the biggest thing for me, what I've leaned into is whatever 
insecurities or things that I have to figure out for my own personality to continue to want to drive forward and find motivation and those type of things. Like if I'm aware that I struggle for it, that means everyone does. Yeah. And so I'm just trying to share. I, I'm also very aware that my brain is unique and I operate very strange and can think about a lot of things that other people don't or, or just I'm different and yeah. into it. And so what I want to do is just share the strategies that I've tried to figure out to help me go forward. Mm. Um, you know, I couldn't give any fuck less about talking to you about what the exercises of my workout today are. There's yeah. so much information of that for you to go find that please go find it. I've also yeah. put it out there. You know what I mean? I don't want to keep talking to that side. I'm more concerned about human performance i'm more concerned about like what are the things that i can do to allow That's, me to be happier be more focused yeah. and hearing you talk about back back to money yeah and talking about that right that like well if these things don't make me happy yeah. then i don't need a lot of money and if money mm -hmm. isn't the driving force behind it then i don't have to do as much and if I'm happy not doing as much, <laughs> sick. Yeah. But also, is can that be almost a personal manipulation? That's the thing. Just because we manipulate ourselves doesn't mean we know we did it. We I mean to me stay in our corner on, on being happy. Like that's the one I can't seem to lie to myself about. I agree. Uh, maybe it's like me just giving myself permission to do what I feel like I, I want to do. Like I I, I do compare too much. And I honestly, like, I remember when I started Biggest Loser, my Instagram page was private mm -hmm. and they made me go public with it. And it's like the great biggest regret. I, 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 I want to be George Clooney, you know, like, okay. so I want to be dude. <laughs> right. so here, so here, so I guess so this is now where I'm going to get with you is, so why the fuck aren't you doing whatever you want to do? If, if you don't give a shit about the money and you want to, build these relationships with people and you're starting to build that thing. Like why not just be really excited about whatever that former chapter was in your life that you had a super cool opportunity that no one gets to experience. Yep. That's it. That's all it was. You okay. Know? Cause so then the honest, the, the legit re the response is what I am able to earn on my social media pays for my super cool project. Mm-hmm. Right. Like money that's coming in. Well, it does right now. Right now. It goes right back out to my writers and my design. Like I, I mean, I've, this has been under, I feel like it's been my kangaroo pouch just for like, since I don't know, like for eight months ago. And it, I, I, I'm, I'm fingers crossed launching in the, in the new year. And it's just like, I've got to pay for the party. And that's why I keep it going. But like, I just kind of want to be like, I used to post when I would see, I was like on a walk and I like saw snails crossing a path. Like those are the pictures I would post. I'm like, oh my God. And I would make, I'm actually quite funny, Matt. I don't know if you know that. I am very witty. I have the most, funniest. Most really funny people have to tell people that. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> no, but I, I'm like quirky <laughs> and funny. And like, I I am like deprogramming years of people saying you need somebody to do your social media. You need to write these things. You need to be motivated. I'm like, oh, fuck, I just want to post any of those snails. Things. I know. And that's, I think what I'm going through is I'm like, it's not a regret because it's done. I must be the stream. And I, you know, I am going forward, but I was like, I want to post about snails. Like I was, I was listening to Howard Stern and Kate Packensale has this new show coming out. I forgot the name of it. And she's got over 5 million followers and she posts her cat. Let's literally, I mean, great night, Kate's hot. I mean, look, cool. I don't know that we can say the rules of what helps Kate Beganzel applies to you and me. I think maybe <laughs> this is a bit of an outlier that we're trying to you know uh, reference. I, I, I yes. totally get what you well, mean. Well, look at Gina Carano. Same thing. She just posts random stuff, and it, but it's what's on her heart. And also, like everyone's, yeah. You are judging a very curated view of their life. You have no fucking idea what's happening behind that screen. You're right. Right. I just want to post Don't snails again. Up. So, so do it. So, right. So look, here, here's something that, that I've really leaned into and it's, it's full accountability fucking across the board. You, you don't have to do a fucking thing at all. You don't have to do shit, Jen. Okay. 
Okay. Right? So the advantage of you not having to do anything is only do shit you want to do. And admit to yourself, like right now, like if you're if you're using the social media thing to help build this other thing, yes. then know that's what you're choosing to do, right? Yeah. You're at the fucking wheel of that, man. You are building something else. Start talking about what you want to build and start sharing the ideas and concepts of what's going on. Share that passion with people that you give a fuck about. Share all of those type of things. Take photos of fucking snails. But what, <laughs> what you don't get is both. Either, either do it exactly how the fuck Jen wants to and own and love those consequences because no one else gets a fucking vote in Jen's life. Or play the game mm. and feel like you compromised who you are for this external factor that isn't giving you reward anymore. I think I'm too unhappy playing the game. Good. So stop. Yo, you playing the game isn't posting to social media. It's it's playing the game. It's doing those things that like, oh, this will be a good post instead of like, that's what I give a shit about. And I mm -hmm. think that's the biggest shift that we're gonna see. We 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 have come through a very, very unique window. And because the social media thing now is a really big part of our life, you know, if you zoom out, just zoom out two decades. This is a very interesting turn in human time. Yeah. Prior to this, none of anything we get to do for a living were real jobs. <laughs> Whereas now, like 10 years ago, like if a kid was like, I'd like to be an influencer, it felt the stupidest thing ever. Yeah. Yeah. Like, please go to college. Yeah. Whereas now, I don't necessarily agree. Yeah. This is a real job. It's real work. And if you have the ability to build your life and do whatever it is you want to do for a living, yo, I say go for it. And if you want to make food eating videos where once a week you have to eat some food challenge, you chose to be owned by that fucking lifestyle, dude. Yeah. <laughs> but you can yeah. also stop. Yeah. I, you know, I, and, and so I guess what comes with that, right, is whatever you're doing. You chose it. No, no one, no one gets a vote in Jen's life. Yo, you don't have a boss. No. Right. So. I, okay. So then what, why aren't you doing? I think I've been being, behaving like a victim in the sense that, well, social media doesn't allow me to be the coach that I am. So I can't versus right like it's total victim like my hands and are my tied question is is someone out there doing it successfully i don't think anybody does what i do you okay. know i i i, I well, well okay so could, is could, someone out there genuinely reaching people and making a good living doing it i i, I in their own way yeah for yeah, sure i think so I, that, yeah so it's possible Yes, it's possible, but like it's like it's funny. I go back to Chris Powell. He and I are are kind of kindred spirits. We are the we our favorite people are the ones that are struggling to start. Whether it's you've never moved, you've never, or, or you 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 were, uh, you know, a professional athlete, and you know that fell out of out of sight, and you life, and you trying to get back into it. And women postpartum. We understand the psyche around getting started and we have the hearts for it. And I think that's why, you know, but it takes a certain person. It takes a certain dialogue and language. And Chris and I are, are, are you know, the two of the few that do do it. Yeah. And I, I, I think Chris does an excellent job. He really gives great information. And <clears throat> I just, for me, I come to life when I'm in front of people and I'm, and I think that's where I'm at, at this crossroad of pouting and, you know, building my own vehicle for this is okay. Well then if you want to coach, start coaching and, it, and, you know, even if that means teaching in classes again, you know what I mean? Like I just, I feel like part of me is really sad through this pandemic because I'm not working with people like I used to. And now I've been training some of my, I've got a few like my celebrities that are uh, when they're not on tour, they're here and I, I work with them and it's, it sparked something in me, Matt. I was like, Oh, 
this is what I love. This is what I do. The conversations, the way they change, the way I, I, I create an environment that helps them work through things on their own, truly. Like I, and, and, and I just know I want to do more of that and scaling that. Well, the, and it's been done before. Like Oprah mm-hmm. has scaled connection. You know, she has done it. Um, bit of an exception to the rule there, but well, yeah, but hey, let's let's go for sure, it. Sure, right? sure. I mean, she... fucking hey, if we're picking a model, <laughs> <laughs> but right, but that's but that's what she did. The, the difference is though is when she started, just like when I started, people were allowed to spend time with her every day, um, and and in my case, every week, and and so finding um, that through line to to be able to serve and connect, which is what I want to do. Is is where I feel like, it's, I mean, at least this conversation that's hit me. It's like, okay, are you done pouting? Start building it, and I already have started building it, but it just feels scary, which probably means it's right. <laughs> and and dude, it is super fucking scary. Yeah, you no, know, it's super fucking scary, Jen. I feel that way constantly with my own business, all the time. Okay, because yeah, I I want growth and I want it to be the thing that I want it to be, but also I've got to keep it in the thing that matters to me. Mm. Um, you know, I, you know, I mentioned earlier recently, I started a mentorship group. Um, yep. Yep. And you know, that was a big one. That was a big one to, to lean into, but you know, it's great. I feel good yeah. about talking to those people. I feel good about having to organize my thoughts better and share my own insanity with these people that are interested. And then isn't it, it's crazy. The accountability, even though you're helping them, what it does to you. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Yeah. It, well, that, that's part of it, right? Like we know that how the psychology of accountability goes in goal setting mm-hmm. that, you know, even just verbalizing it raises it to a 10% chance, even mm-hmm. telling it to a second person raises it to like 25%. Uh, having a plan then bumps it to like 65 and then actually yeah. program to keep it accountable is a 95% success rate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So having that accountability, also people are scared of that accountability because yeah. There's failure avoidance, right? Well, if I don't commit, I can't fail. Yes. Yes. And, you know, who does that work for? You find I me mean, the one example that someone safe towed the fucking line to their dreams and it worked out. Yeah. And dude, you, you've done it, right? Like, and believe me, I, I, that's one of the questions I wrote down is I think it's fucking crazy, man. Like I, I thought about, how many things pop up and you're like, fuck yeah, the thing, there's the opportunity, you know, that getting, getting American gladiator. Oh my God. Yeah. And not only that getting American gladiator and you're a gladiator and you're not a yeah. contestant. You're not yeah. some right. You're a fucking American gladiator, dude. Yeah. And I can't imagine the excitement that comes with that. And then seeing who's backing it and all this type of stuff, like, yo, we have a fucking home run. Yeah. And then it's gone. And gone. Yeah. Gone. Like just I mean, fucking, I mean, I imagine that is a an email that goes out is like uh we will not be filming next. Oh, week. they didn't even <laughs> tell anybody. I didn't even get a call, email. They just we just kind of gently found out. But that's the thing, even with Biggest Loser, both my shows, two seasons done. Right. And right. you're just like I remember the first time it happened, it was a great lesson. If I'd said on that golden goose egg, it would have not been good for my well being. Or my personal growth. It was, I was I was I was 24 and not in a place to uh, have that kind of wealth or attention or anything. And no. then, oh, I'm no. glad I didn't have any of that. Yeah. Happen Thank God. Me. I always joked. Do you ever have you ever met BJ Gador? No. He used to be a men, uh, fitness director for Men's Health. Incredible human being. Um, he's look him up, BJ Gador. He's fantastic. Uh, and. Uh, but we were, we joked, we're like, we're so glad we were born when we did. He's from Wisconsin. I'm from Chicago. And like, if we had been born like 10 years later, we would have been like the ass on the internet people, like for sure. You know what I mean? Like we would not have been, we would have not made good choices. <laughs> no, no. Right. Uh, and yeah. so, but dude, that's a hard pivot. And it's a hard pivot to, to feel really unfair about that. Nothing you did change that path, but that's. <laughs> That's also part of trying to play a role where other people are gatekeepers and yeah. what you're building now eliminates all of them. Yeah. It's just you. And so at this point, Jen, like have, have the confidence, dude, and bet on you. 
you're the fucking stud of this. You're the driving force that was going to help these other projects. Like, yo, just help you. And you don't need their vehicle. It's, uh, it's funny. Kelly said this to me. Our love, I mean, Kelly Sturette, just that's poor little. He's the uh, for our homie on that. He love that man. Um, but he said it to me. It was almost two years ago now, but he's like, so you've already made it. Congratulations. Time to woman up and you get to choose now. That's and he it. Plan- I, I planted, he planted the seed of me years ago. And it's like, he's like, but it's tricky because with come, you know, when you, you, you cross this threshold of like, you get to choose now. Um, when, when, when you're given options, it almost becomes more difficult. Um, like I remember being, a, you know, my first jobs, I was, I was, I was busing tables and I loved my job. Like I had school full time. I was a high schooler. I was 14. Most of my parents were driving me to and from this restaurant. I'm sorry. Was that me to and from this restaurant, uh, you know, to, to bus tables at, and I just loved it because the purpose was save money for college. I got to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I was so motivated. And, uh, and because of that, and because the line's really clear, I worked hard. I loved my job, even though it was cleaning up after people. And, and, and it feels good to work hard. Cause I feel like I know if my big idea, if for Anna isn't what I think it's going to be, and folds and falls apart and I run out of money. I'm a really hard worker. I will make money. I will bust. I will go back to busting tables. I, I won't even blink about it because it, it it's like when the mission is, is that narrow, is that like pin focused? You don't have to, there's less room to think and negotiate with yourself. And now I'm in this place where we, you know, I've created a foundation, a reputation and a financial, op, you know, you know, nest egg to build this and now i have all of these choices and it's it's almost like it's staggering oh my god i kind of just want to go back to busting tables again because it's so narrow and it's like it's just a b c this is the path so it's it's just something that i didn't i didn't anticipate because i've never been in this position and that's I, you know what i've been working for and yet when i arrived i didn't know what i was in for <laughs> no and look i and, and again back to just realization of you know, the difference in your path to mine, right? Like, yeah, because you had a thing pop with Biggest Loser TV, stuff like that, a book, all this stuff and got this big following, but you didn't have your business. Mm -hmm. You're, you're a asset for, for other people's things. Yes. Right. And there's a big skill in that. So like, I'm not trying to use that as any other negative other than fact. Yeah. No, no, no. So you didn't get a bunch of the reps that I've got for the last seven years of running a really small business that slowly gets yeah. problems to figure out. Great so the point. difference is now is you're trying to build a thing that can immediately hit orbit mm-hmm. and it's ready mm-hmm. to scale and catch because you have a great resource of people that are interested in Jen and interested yeah. in what you do, right? But you can't half-ass the start anymore. You don't get yeah. to, to nickel and dime, or you're convincing yourself you don't get to. Mm. Because I, I've used this when I work with people I hire, uh, including you know, especially Brant, my my videographer, uh, and working with him when he first started with me, we were running into headaches about his quality of work. And it wasn't that it was low or any of that. It said it's slow. Mm. He can get what he wants, but it's slow. And so what I had to instill in Brandt is like, yo, we make decisions full speed ahead. These things get done at these intervals. We make mistakes and then we work on feedback. That's Mm -hmm. it. Because you're going to be better. And this goes for your podcast. And it's no different than any of the lifting, dude. You're going to be better at episode 100 than you are episode one. So start yeah. getting to episode a hundred. Okay. Right. And so whatever mm-hmm. the reps are of that for your business, just understand that what you, what Jen's really going into as entrepreneur business, this side of life for you is you are going to do nothing but solve problems. That's the job. Okay. 
And so, yo, you have it. You've got the ability. You think clear. You've got resources. You've got all these great things. And the more that you can be honest with yourself of like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. (laughs) It helps. Because then it makes it a playground. It's like, I don't know. I'm well, just and also share discovery. That. Yeah. Yeah. I, sh- share that. Share. I, I think share, I think more transparency than ever with, with, with those type of things. Like that's the, yo, know, if it's easy to look at someone like Jen and be like, well, fuck, I could start a business too. And they don't see that it's still a struggle, that it's still a fight, that you know, there's no rule book to any of this. I know. Whereas you working before, even though it's not a traditional job by any stretch, you're still showing up being told now, perform now. Whereas your life now is, Jen, perform. But then yeah. you're like, I don't know where to put the energy. <laughs> yeah. And that becomes really tricky of like, where does yeah. the energy? You know, because what you can do, you you remind me so much. Um, do you know Barton Geo from Barbell Brigade at all? I mean, and love. I just sent them pasta because they moved to Las Vegas, yeah. and they said there's no yeah. good pasta out here. And I was like, I got you. <laughs> we we just spent a week with them, and um, oh, amazing! Yeah, love those two. Geo is incredible. Yeah, Geo is such just a driving workhorse of a human, and she's aware that that's her superpower. Mm-hmm. It's like, yo, I can just grind. And you can too, because there's no way here without that. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's admission. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah, anyone's like, everyone's path changes, right? I mean, look at what Gunner was doing 20 years ago. Look at, I mean, when oh. I started getting into this, dude, I was trying to film things for me to, to do this travel thing, like, like yeah. on YouTube, right? And where has that pivoted? Like yeah. it's a moving thing, but what doesn't change is I want to create. Yeah. Yeah. And I love the connection the same way you do with people. Mm-hmm. And that's why I have this. Yeah. It's just another vehicle for that side of it. Um, and, and man, these conversations and these people in my life are, are, have benefited me endlessly. And so being able to share whatever that resource is with anyone else that, that's trying to figure it out, I think it's important that they know everyone has to figure it out. Yeah. Well, that's why I wanted to do this on your show. Like we were going to have this conversation anyways. And I thought, oh, man, right, right, right. might as well just hit the record button. Um, and also part of me selfishly wanted the accountability. You know, I'm like, it's, gonna, it's out there. You know what I mean? Like it's out there. And not just with you, but with, with, you know, whoever feels like listening. And I mean, I appreciate everything. I mean, I've taken notes today. I've Dude, got my I, Matt Vincent notes. I, and I'm, I'm curious about you, man. Like there's, there's been some, some interesting life reset, right? Like, so I know that you still have your house in Denver, but you're renting. Yeah. So you've. Yeah, no, I'm still in Denver. I split time there in LA and I'm, I've got the van now. So. Which I'm Most very- people don't. I mean, thank you. I mean, I'm Bonnie's like, when, when am I getting a FaceTime tour? Um, you know, I'm definitely an indoor cat. So when, <laughs> I am not like van life for weeks. Like I could see myself doing a two or three day drive to you in Missouri and then staying in your guest room. Like I'm not going to be parked out front saying, Hey guys, see you in the morning. We're going to stay in the van. You know? Oh, no, no, <laughs> you know? no. But, but I think like we we've done eight weeks in my truck. Uh, yeah, no, that's really remarkable. Us. You yeah, can no. absolutely do that, especially like if you oh, say, yeah. or, "Hey, I'll just cruise with you guys," but in my van. Oh yeah, no, no, no. There's it, it's built for that. I've got solar. I've got a thirty gallon. You, you tank can do eight that. weeks that way. I promise. I uh, yeah. I mean, I'm probably probably. I know I'm gonna. I I I would bet yes, but it's it would be. Um, what I like it for is I just, I have this, this deepened desire to like be more outside, be more unattached, um, be, be elsewhere. You know, it's funny. I just said I was an indoor cat, but I'm like, man, maybe I'm more outdoor. I don't know. Like it, it's just, it's, it's, I think it's, you can decide what you want to be every day. Yeah. Well, I think it, yes. 
but it's also a chance for me to explore. It's not just exploring places, it's exploring myself. I think when you, you learn about yourself, when you put yourself through different experiences, whether that's time by yourself or time climbing, a, a, you know, a, for, a, you know, some sort of 14 er you know, or even just spending that much time like you guys did in your car, or your truck, you think, well, you because just, other things so arise. Certain. Like with that yes. wood trip lifestyle, especially with a van, right? Like with this type of setup, there's, there's daily things to figure out. Yep. And then like, where are we sleeping? <laughs> yeah. You sleep don't night. you like the simplicity of that? I right. love, I, 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 there are times that I daydream about living, you know, under the stars with, you know, with the sun, with the, you know, up with the sun and to bed with the moon, you know, where I am led by my instinct of food, shelter, and love. Mm -hmm. And, and I, and I think stop wishing to start doing that. <laughs> I can do that. You know, like it's really all you've, that you've I, invested in now being able to do that. Well, correct. Yeah. But I also, you know, did I need a van to do it? Come on. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah, available. Don't, don't. So what? So what, dude? Yeah, that, that's that's to me being apologetic for fucking building <laughs> your universe the way that Jen fucking wants her universe. Well, to be. that's a good. You point. want to fucking I, van and you've worked your ass off to be able to afford a thing. Don't ever fucking apologize for something uh, you chose okay. to build for work you've done. It's more like my process around. Um, I know if I have something that anchors me. I know I can really explore fully. So it's a, it's a, it's a silly comparison, but like even on Biggest Loser, we'd have like four camera crews going through these workouts. I would have a little post-it note this size with my entire workout written out just because I needed to know the pathway was in, was in front of me. And, and then I would leave it by my water bottle bottle. And I'm like, and so when I'd go get a drink, I would, I'm like, Oh yeah, that's where I was going next because there's so much going on. I couldn't fully let go into coaching unless I knew I had a roadmap. And that's what I feel about the van. I'm like, I, I, feel, I don't know why I feel like I'm going to die without a van. So I got the van and, 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 and no. now I can explore yeah. untethered because I know I have what technically is a tether of the van. And I, I, so it sounds silly, but that's for me, at least something I know I need to feel like I can really lean into whatever. It's like, how oh, long have you had the van now? Uh, we're at two months, two months. How many nights have you slept in it? Four. Well, that's good, dude. That's better than that's, zero. That's okay. Yeah, I knew than you zero. were looking for a goose egg. I'm like, no, 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 this no, no, no. I wasn't, but, I was sure hoping not. But in, but in fairness, I did, I did bring it back to Arizona. Uh, Tommy camper vans is doing some little upgrades. Like nice. it's not like little, like it sounds stupid. Oh, dude, it's never perfect, but like little, just so it's out of it out of my hands for two weeks. Work. Yeah. It's always yeah. a work in progress. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I was like, I want this. I don't know if you saw the videos, uh, on my YouTube, but I did like these teal, like I made the roof rack and like the, the ladder oh, yeah, yeah, and like yeah. the gym. I'm like, this teal is going to be amazing. It's like the spirit of the van. And I got it. I'm like, this looks like shit. I was like, <laughs> oh, so I was like, can we fix these two things? Also yeah. paint that shit black. Yeah, <laughs> like, it looks terrible. Black. Well, dude, here, so, okay. Here's, here's something I want you to do. So once you get the van back, figure out like a go bag. Ooh. Go right? bag. So, okay. Look, I'll I'll send you a duffel. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. But you probably I, have. On. Wait, don't move. I hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I, I don't just have a duffel. Oh shit. There's a gang of them. Well, yeah, but I've got the special edition. Yeah. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. On Shro one. Right. So that, that bag. That. Perfect. I want you to throw a pair of hiking boots in it. Okay. A hoodie. Boots. A blanket. Hood, like blank. a pair of hiking pants and some yeah. socks and that shit never leaves your van okay so right? it's like it's my go pack it's yeah. everything so there. build because because we're high level maniacs i have to build things a certain way for me if there's any barrier of me using it i'll fucking i'll space the perfect example mm. of that is dip horns if I don't have a permanent place for dip horns to live in my gym for me to do dips, 
I will not put those up every time I should. When you said that, I'm like, does he mean for triceps? <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. Triceps. I'm work. obsessed. So oh, like, shit, man. Yeah, so like, if I don't have those permanently ready to go, I'm not going to unhook and put that attachment on every time. I'll just not do dips. Hilarious. All right. So I know that about me, and I'm done lying that I will be someone who will go through that. I need to build in a world that the spontaneous things that I want to do, I can. So like having a bag with my mountain bike shit in it, in the back Mm -hmm. of my truck, all I have to do is throw my bike on the truck and I can leave. Mm. doesn't matter. I know that I have a bib, shoes, a helmet, and stuff in the truck ready to go. And so if it's like, fuck, I feel like going to ride my mountain bike. 20 minutes. Go. I can you go can do it. And yeah. Okay. Instead this of is like, good. I can talk my way out of it. It's like, Oh, I've got to get everything going. It's, it's ready to go yeah. at all times. And, and dude, practice it. So just like one night, once you have your van at about 4 PM, be like, yeah, I'm going to go. Okay. And then just leave with your phone. And what else you do you what? really need, dude? Nothing. I mean, this is actually I've really good. Somewhere. <sighs> Like, you don't have to plan out some fucking fancy picnic. Like, the idea of the van is an escape pod. It's not (laughs) an over thing of, like, I need a fancier picnic. Yo, it's an ability for you to fuck off. I literally think you just named my van. The escape escape pod? pod? (laughs) (laughs) But, like, having that ability, that it's just ready to go. Okay. It's kind of a good mental muscle to work for me, too. Just... To go taking risk, making that decision, thinking on my feet. I just think it's like a muscle. I mean, it, it's weird. This these this pandemic of being isolated has been so amazing for me in the way that I looked at like my 2019 schedule. Matt, I was in like three cities minimum a month. Minimum presenting trade shows, fuck off trips. I am never doing that again. I cannot believe how, I mean, and I was great seeing everyone, but oh my gosh, never again. And yet I I don't even look at it because I I still love. uh, No, but you still like traveling, but in a way, this person keeps calling me. Hold on. (laughs) Hold on. Call you right back. Um, Call on a podcast. Um, But, but. Uh, my brain. Oh, I don't want to go. I do love to travel. Like I have plans for Italy this year. I'm going to Greece. I'm, I'm like, I'm getting the fuck out. Like I'm going, but I will tell you, there's a sense of like the being home has, 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 has rounded my corners a little bit. Mm. I'm just a little mushy. I'm a little like, I'm fine. You know what I mean? I'm somewhat, which is good. There's, there's a piece that I've found in myself, but, um, you know, it's it's like anything else. If you stop doing your dips, right? You 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 yeah, get yeah. those ba- those bingo wings, Matt. So it's bingo like <laughs> not that I've ever had to use bingo wings as a term, but uh, but you know, it's like the oh, know, I bingo, get it. bingo. Yep. Okay, good. Um, so it's it's a it's an interesting dichotomy. But I got to tell you, even just talking out loud to you, oh my god, for seventy five minutes has felt good. But dude, I believe um, the thing that you're saying about staying sharp, and and so here here's yeah. one of those things that really works for me. As I'm aware that my biggest motivator is time and what I would like to accomplish in my life, say, before I'm dead, because mm-hmm. it kind of all has to happen between now and then. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> just a bit. Um, I'm just really aware of it, like almost to the point of, well, you know how people will get a terminal diagnosis and then go on this life thing? Because, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Because they're dying. Dying. Because nothing matters anymore. Yeah. Well, but that's how it should be right now. That's right. I'm already now. there. It's funny. Yeah. Keep, well, yeah. And so, like, the big things I noticed about my perception of time is that when I am in routine and when I'm comfortable and when I'm doing those things, time just fucking vanishes. Like two weeks. Mm. Do all that because I'm not on. Because my brain can fill in a bunch of gaps. You're so right. Whereas I go on a trip to Iceland, and if we're there for 10 days, I have so many new things to tell you about those 10 days. 
because I'm constantly on, I'm constantly seeing new things. It's smelling new smells. It's figuring out where to eat. It's, it's sharp. Yes. Uh, you fucking Uber eats it to the house and not have to question any of those things, dude. I ain't trying to leave my house. I know it's, it's crazy <laughs> that you're saying that because even like I'm, I've been on that hustle with black Friday, like my CBD company, I'm trying to get things going. I have new products launching. I've, I've got all these other things that are coming together and I'm like, okay. And I, I literally had that thought this morning. I thought, what can you just leave to the new year? Everything's going to slow down anyways. And I go, stop. No, don't take six weeks off. Six you can, weeks. like, could you, like, that's sick. That, that, and you can. I can. But, and, and, and there is a balance between, like, these are the things I want to do for life, but I want, I want to participate. Yeah. I want to do these things. And I can't believe you just said that. You're right. It's like when you get comfortable, you turn off. And then, like, I literally, I was like, wow, time flies. It's because your brain is fucking off. Well, think about people. That's how that's how that happens, dude, where it's like, well, I was 25 yesterday and now I'm 60 because I went to a fucking cubicle and I stayed at the same four gray walls and I did enough to get by every day for 30 fucking years. Well, and you know, and it's it's part of system. And I, I know we got to go soon because we're kind of getting at our limit, but it's crazy. I, I had no one really knows my dad. I mean, just so um, we're clear, I don't have a limit. I don't have shit to do. I have to, I have to go. <laughs> I have to change somebody. You're like, Jen, hello again. Only do what you want. Oh, I got the note, Jen. Do only do shit you want to do. I've got it. I've got the, the coaching from Matt Vincent down. But my father uh, got COVID early 2020. And even with the antibodies and even fully vaccinated, he got COVID again a few weeks ago. So did my mom. My mom came through it okay. My dad started to improve, dipped severely. He's been hospitalized. He finally got out last Wednesday. So just five days ago. And he had blood clots throughout his lungs. Whoever's saying that the virus isn't real, it's like, it's very real. And I'm talking with my father on the phone Sunday and he sounds weak. Now he's only been out of the hospital three days. Um, and I, he sounds weak and I says, it, it's really serious. I'm like, yeah, that pulmonary embolism <laughs> are very serious. And actually when they, 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 when they pass through your heart, most people die when that happens that you happened not to. And I go, please just take some time. I get off the phone with him yesterday. So 24 hours later, he went back to work. Of course I'm did. like, what? He's like, I just got to get back to work. I go, are you, he's in the, I need to be you not know, at the cubicle, but I got to get back to work and I got to do the thing. I'm like, dad, you are 76. I should be planning your funeral right now. Uh -huh. I think it makes it, it shakes me up. I'm like, you talk no, about also, when you're dying. What but, people, those? but people <laughs> like that, dude, like they need the work. Like people need a direction and people need a thing to do, especially a guy like that. Right. Like yeah. worked forever. They don't yes. know another way. I know. And I said to my dad, I'm like, if you training and he's like i'm only doing a client or two a day because he retired as a principal became a personal trainer because i was doing it and he saw the joy and here we go yeah. and it norman is just amazing storm and norman and and i go if, if you receive more energy than you yep. than burns from that i understand but i i just i'm like get off the wheel get off you know what i mean like so, so and here's another thing that's really helped me with dealing with other people yeah. in the same way that I view myself as like, you don't get a vote. Yeah. No, you don't get a vote with what I do with my life. Right now. I'm aware that I have favorable and unfavorable consequences for the decisions I make. And that's really it. Yep. But just like for his, I don't get a vote in his life. Right. I know. I hear where you're going. I, last time I, punch checked, line. I, I don't I know. I didn't, he didn't call you and say, Hey, do you think I can go back to work today? He didn't because he's a fucking 75 year old man yeah. who wants to do whatever the fuck he wants to do. Yeah. But it just like, I thought that's your choice to go back to work. I'm like, I literally said, I'll pay for a trip for you to go to Florida. Uh, why he's doing it. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Fuck. I know. But it just, it, it just, it was, it's, it, it, it struck me hard. It's part of what, it's part of why I texted you last week. I'm like, I got to talk to Matt. I was like, my dad could have died this week. And, you know, like you, you just start to think about things in a different way and like, forget about my death. You know, we just assume I've got time. It, we don't have it. And, and um, having that happen with my father just was, 
it's just kind of spooky and um and jarring but also the healthiest kick in the ass you could imagine and that's really you know so i was like i can't sit and wallow i can't i'm like i just have to call matt <laughs> and talk through uh just talk through it like i didn't really have a end point in mind but i will tell you this helped a lot i feel like um I appreciate your friendship and your perspective and the the freedom to be imperfect in our conversation and, and get to learn from each other because uh it's it's what I like it's it's what I live for, you know, this kind of camaraderie. So I really, I really appreciate you. Yeah, I appreciate you, Jen. I, I love you to death, man. Uh we've got to know each other over a short couple of years and I'm really, yeah. really glad that we did. Me you too. Know, the, the first time that we ran into each other at Sornex. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I no. We didn't connect at all. We were, weren't we at, we, didn't we meet at, at, at Smelly's competition up in SAC? It was me, you, Kelly lifted. That wouldn't have been the first time. Oh, that was the second time. Was first second. time was Sornex. Oh, I yeah. It was Sornex. And then I think we had hung out at Gunners. Okay. Oh, man, you've got a great memory. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> um, but man, I, I've been I've been blessed. Uh, you've been an incredible friend, Jen, and, and you've always been open and able to have conversations and able to connect and reach out. And like you're saying, I know that that's your superpower. Um, so you know, share, share all okay. that, dude. Share the okay. fight, share the struggle, share that you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, no, no one does. <laughs> No, no one has any fucking idea, right? Like there's no rule book to this life thing. Everyone's just showing a different thing that, look, I found this way over here. Try it. Yeah. It's like a different panel. <laughs> totally. That's you feel like a bunch of kids yeah. in the woods. Like, oh, it's no. right over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then like, yeah. maybe you don't fit. Yeah. But that, uh, like, again, that's okay. Right. Like that, to me, that's that accountability for like, because because you're in a position, again, that you can really own that Jen doesn't have to fucking do anything Jen doesn't want to do. Yeah. Own the other side of that, that if you are doing something, that you chose it, right? So be present yep. and be in it and give it everything that you've got. So, mm. or don't fucking go. <laughs> or tell people no and say, I'm not interested. I'm writing that extension in it. Right. That that's that's the other part of the full accountability thing that's really helped me. And that, you know, I I don't do well with big family things, and so I kind of quit attending those a while back because yeah. I just didn't care for it. And uh, one of those things that I told my mom, I was like, "Look, the, there's there's two ways to look at this. You can be really bummed that I'm not going to show up for a lot of shit." I said, "Or." The things that I show up for, I'll be fully present for because that's where I want to be because I don't yeah. do the fucking thing that I don't want to do. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not showing up to this out of obligation. And and I've told yeah. her, I was like, I'm not obligated to hang out with you simply because you're my mom. <laughs> that realization in my life that no one, no one gets a vote, not for yeah. any type of weird past or any of that. So the advantage of that is I like having, I like hanging out with Evelyn Vincent. Mm-hmm. I'm it also changes the, the experience though. Exactly right. Like, yeah, yeah. That's a really so, I don't owe you this time. This is where I want to be. Well, thanks for being here with me. I Dude. know this is a choice too. Of course. You're like, oh yeah. fuck, Jen's crying again. I know, I get you crying. I'm gonna get rich off of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. That's how podcasting works from what I understand. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I I I, I wish you a great week. Thank you for the, the the friendship and the ear and the advice. Um, and then um, we'll talk soon. I'm not kidding. I'll text you when we hang up because I'm going to be in Kansas City. Cool. That would be great. Okay. Let me uh, stop recording. Everyone, thank you for listening. Thank you.